Hello and welcome once again to the Waters and Stanton video channel. I'm going to talk about radials, just some simple basic rules about using radials. But before we start that, a short news item from ACOM about a new auto ATU they've got coming for their high power linear amplifiers. Well, it looks interesting, doesn't it? Got no further information at the moment, no um, specification, prices or uh, delivery, but it looks interesting. First of all, let's um, have some boundaries. I'm going to talk about quarter wave verticals because that's the sort of vertical that the majority, particularly beginners, will use. And it doesn't really matter whether it's a single band uh, vertical or a multi band vertical, but you're likely to start off with a quarter wave vertical and that's what we'll confine our discussion to. So why do you need a radial system? Well let's quickly draw um, the basic dipole. Here's a basic dipole. There's two sides to it, you feed it with coax cable in the, in the centre. We could turn that dipole into a vertical dipole. Again you feed it in the centre, you've got the two, two poles. And then we come to the quarter wave. Now the quarter wave, only half of the antenna is there. You've got half of the antenna poking up in the air, but there's a missing half, and the missing half is the ground beneath it. That's the other pole of the dipole. Regard it. If you think about it as a dipole, it starts to make sense. So what's so important about the ground beneath it? Well, the important thing about the ground beneath it is twofold. First of all, it's the other half of the antenna. And secondly, it acts like a mirror. It's quite important. It actually has quite a big effect on the performance of a vertical antenna. You could put a copper rod into the ground and you'd have some sort of earth connection. It would be very poor. It works, but it would be very poor. So the normal arrangement is to have some wire radials. Now these wire radials can either be laid on the ground or they can be buried just below the ground but it's important to bury them just below the ground because RF energy travels on the surface so if you put those radials three or four inches below the ground you're going to get very little benefit indeed so the radials need to be either on the ground or just below the ground. How long do they have to be? Well, the length is not that important. The idea, the myth that they're going to be a quarter wave long is wrong. Basically, you want as many radials as you can put on the ground and make them as long as is practical. So if you've got a vertical that covers 20, 15 and 10 metres and the walk bands in between, and you've only got the ability to put out radials that are three metres long, do so. Put as many as you can out. If you've got three metre radius, if you put about 15 or 20 out, you're going to get really good results. So the idea that they've got a certain length is a myth. It's the quantity rather than the length. If you can make them longer, so much the better if you've got more room. But if you haven't got too much room, then just put down what you can. And sometimes you can't put them in all directions. Well, if you can't put them in all directions, there will be a certain amount of directivity in favour of the radials that are laid down, but it's not the end of the world. Put down what you can. Now, what do we make the radials of? What should they be? Should they be thick copper wire? Should they be thin wire, multi-stranded? Again, it doesn't actually matter. But what does matter is that you consider the longevity of the radials. If you put bare copper down, it's going to tarnish very very quickly and if it's below the surface of the earth it will start to deteriorate and of course you've got no way of seeing what's happening below the earth. My recommendation is to use PVC covered 
cable or wire. Multi-stranded PVC covered wire is fine and it really doesn't matter how thick or thin it is within reason. It's got to be strong enough to put down and survive. But if you use PVC stranded wire, you'll be fine. Lay it on the surface or the grass and with time it'll just sort of sink into the ground, particularly in winter. Best time to put radials down is in the winter when the ground is soft and it will, with time, just sink below the, the soil levels gently and you'll be able to mow the lawn, no problems at all. But you don't have to put the radials on the ground. And in fact, if we go back uh, quite a few years now, it was much more popular to have the radials in the air, forming what we call a ground plane. Now a ground plane is basically uh, a vertical antenna that instead of standing on the ground is at the top of a mast. That mast can be 10 foot high, 3 meters high, 4 or 5 meters high. It doesn't really matter. The higher the better. But there is a distinct advantage in raising your vertical off the ground. Even if you can only get it around about 2 meters above the ground, there's a benefit. Because what you then need to do is to put resonant radials down, but very few of them. Base, as a basic guide, you need two radials per band, and ideally those radials should be 180 degrees, in other words, opposite each other. You need two radials per band. But the improvement in performance is quite remarkable. You'll get at least one S point, and probably about one and a half S points, if not more, improvement when you raise that vertical off the ground. Sometimes it's easy, it depends on the layout of the garden, sometimes it's not. The thing with, of course, with radials above the ground, you can always see them, and if you want to move them to cut the lawn or to do something, gardening, that sort of thing, you can just disconnect them and then put them back. If you've got a multiband antenna, then you've got several choices. The two, the two main choices is to have two radials per band, and you can have two radials fairly close to each other, so parallel to, to uh, look rather like a fan dipole, with about, I don't know, uh, 20 centimetres, 30 centimetres apart, so that works okay. You can actually put traps in a radial. If you've got a vertical that covers 20 and 15 metres, you could actually put a radial, or two radials down, with a 15 metre trap in. So the radial then will function both on 20 metres and 15 metres, it's quite a, a nice way of reducing the number of radials you need. But if you can get your antenna above ground, then it works much, much better. And for some people, it's an easier option. It's, it's, I mean, there's, there's, there's several advantages. One of the things I like about putting a vertical above ground is you can actually see the connection. You can see the coax going into the antenna. You haven't got an accumulation of water and all the gunge and that that happens in the winter. It's right up there in the clear. You can inspect it, you can see it, and uh, it's, it's just a better position, apart from the fact that it works so much better. So there we are. It's all pretty straightforward stuff, isn't it? So that's a non-technical guide on how to install radials and whether you need them and uh, uh, how many you need, etc, etc. So now it's your turn to go out in the uh, summer weather. We've still got the summer weather as we're shooting this video and plan your system and do all the mechanics. You can lay the radials down if you choose to lay them on the ground and let them um, sink into the ground during the winter. Um, if you're going to have radials above ground, of course, then you can actually do the whole system now. So you, the choice is yours. The great thing about ham radio is to enjoy it. And when you do something like this, you'll actually learn something as well. You'll learn how well it works in your particular garden. <clears throat> and I would encourage you to get that vertical off the ground uh, if you possibly can. Um, if you can't, well, don't worry. Um, it, it, there is the improvement to be had if you can get it up uh, off the ground. Only about two or three metres is all that's needed. But either way, it will work. And I'm sure you'll have some fun. So, you take care. Enjoy your hand radio. And as usual... I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Bye for now.